Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about the 11 books that I've read so far in March. So today is March 15th and I've read 11 books in 15 days. If you hear something moving off to the side or some dog whining, Ollie is being such a big baby and um, if you see this picture, this he has to sit next to me on his pink pillow on the desk. So we're going to talk about the books that I've read so far in March. March has been Alien Romance Month for me. <laughs> um, I think Alien Romances have gotten me a little bit out of my funk that I've been in, so we're gonna dive right on into these books. So the first one that I have is a new favorite. We have Choosing Theo by Victoria Aveline. Aveline? I'm so sorry if I'm butchering that. Um, so yeah, this is an Alien Romance. And it's so stinking good. Okay, so Jade is a human woman. She gets stranded on this planet called Calcania in the Cal Calcania customs. Like, if you are a woman, you need to have a husband. Now, marriages on this planet are different than our kind of marriages. Their marriages only last for like a couple months and then they, they can choose another husband if they would like to. And so she picks this guy that no one has ever picked. Um, like she's very interested in his scars and tattoos. Um, whereas the Calcania people believe that any kind of scars on your body is imperfect and they're a very perfect looking society, you know? And so all these women are shocked why Jade would pick Theo, our hero here, um, to be her husband. But Jade is very intrigued by him. So Theo is essentially the town recluse and he's very shocked when Jade picks him and he thinks that this is like a trick, that she's a spy, like someone's like trying to spy on him. And so he uh, thinks that Jade is a spy for the beginning of their relationship. Even though there's this tension and angst between the two of them and this attraction, he's trying very hard to fight because he's like, she can't be real. She can't actually want to be with me. She's a spy. <laughs> and so he takes like all measures possible to get her to admit that she's a spy, even though she's not. <laughs> He believes that no one could love him because of the way that he looks and the trauma that he's gone through. And so it's really, really, really hard for him to believe that Jade would want him. And so Jade tries her very darndest to show him how much she cares and loves him. It takes a lot of work, but somehow we get there. <laughs> I was just in love with this book and um, I immediately read the other two books after this. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but there is a trigger warning in here for kidnapping and attempted sexual assault. So please be aware of that. And the tropes in here is, um, it's an alien romance. It's a book with pets. Um, the hero has a alien pet that's similar to an earth dog. Um, he's really cute. Um, there's a damaged hero. It's faded mates. This is a faded mates romance. <laughs> so like this, this, um, alien species, essentially when they find their faded mates, they'll get these marks on their arms. If you don't like accept it at first, like the marks won't appear. And so at the beginning, Theo's marks don't appear because um, he thinks she's a spy and all this stuff, um, but they might end up appearing on him. <laughs> um, it's on Kindle Unlimited. It's a marriage of convenience. Uh, the hero has never been kissed. Um, there's plus size rep, Jade is a beautiful plus size woman, and scar characters because Theo has scars on his body from a fire, if I'm not mistaken. So I just loved this and I need more people to read it because it was good. I loved it. <laughs> so then I immediately dived into book two, which is Freeing Luca. So this is the romance between Luca and Alice. And Alice is another human woman that has been abducted from Earth. And she gets abducted by evil aliens that are on Calcania. She gets put in like this jail facility. And when she's walking through the facility for the first time with her captor, they walk by this one cell that has an alien in it, a Calcanian alien in it, kind of like Theo was. He immediately comes like feral, like he, tries to break the chains that he's in to get to her. And the scientists and captors believe that they are fated mates. And so they force Alice to be in the same room with him for a while and to try and um, spark him to get his mating um, like marks and tattoos on his hands. And so then they devise this plan to break everybody who's captive in the uh, jail to escape. Um, and then things go on from there. That's just like the very beginning of the book. The beginning of this book was amazing. I love the tension between the two of them when they're stuck in this cell together. I really loved it. It's just like the part after all of that occurred was kind of like a little bit lackluster to me compared to how chose how compared to choosing Theo. So I did not enjoy this one as much as book one, but I think the beginning of it was just amazing to me personally. Luca is a little bit socially awkward <laughs> and doesn't really know how to talk to women. That's kind of endearing, and so that was really cute to me. Um, 
Um, trigger warning in here for kidnapping and torture. Luca does get tortures in here, so just be aware, please. And I think he also is drugged, so. Um, tropes in here, it's an alien romance, a damaged hero, faded mates, it's on Kindle Unlimited. There's a language barrier in the beginning um, when they're in like the jail cell because Luca is so drugged up and like has been tortured for so long like he hasn't spoken in a very long time so Alice is kind of teaching him to speak a little bit um and never been kissed Luca has never been kissed before either so I really enjoyed this one I gave it a four or five stars then I tried to take a break from this series and read Misadventures of a Valedictorian by M.F. Wilde and Mia Michelle um whenever I don't know what to read I'll just pick up a Misadventures book so this is a uh, novella um romance series all written by different authors just about the same title misadventures of a blank you know um none of them connect whatsoever i dnf this one <laughs> so this was just not it so our heroine is valedictorian and our hero here is um i think a football player what is he yeah he's a set he's the he's the star quarterback eric and um, she's been our heroine uh claire's been fantasizing about him for forever and he finally like notices her and they have like a one night thing or a one romp in the closet thing <laughs> and then they can't stop thinking about each other but then like she's like innocent like you know innocent when they first get together and then she turns into this like very experienced thinking person and i'm just like if you were that sheltered i don't get it i, I don't get it when when authors make them do that 180 very immediately, just because they've done it once they know everything, you know? Um, and just like the characters, I didn't like them. Didn't care for any of their dialogue, any of their inner monologue. Um, so I DNF'd it at 20%. Um, the characters just made me mad, especially the hero, so. Then I read another alien romance book, but this is by a different author. This is by Grace Goodwin. If you did not watch my February wrap up, I have gotten into the Interstellar Brides Program by Grace Goodwin, all of her books in that series and her interconnecting series for that because my Libby has all of them on audio. They have like 36 audiobooks by Grace Goodwin on audio. Um, so I've been reading her books in chronological order and hopefully one day I'll do a deep dive video on her but I read a few of her books this month. So I read probably, I don't know if this one's my favorite yet. It's like my favorite or my second favorite so far. It's Tamed by the Beast. <laughs> um this one was very fun <laughs> so we're introduced to a different alien species than we have in the previous books um called atlans and they are essentially aliens that can turn into kind of like beast mode think the hulk like they can change into like a beast except not turn green like and many things will spark them to be in beast mode um one of the things is like there's like a time kind of like ticking like a like a timer ticking in your body of uh, like the time you need to find your mate and if your mate is not found by a certain time your beast mode will happen and you can't not be in beast mode anymore until your mate is found or until you are put down like in this race like being in beast mode for that long can be very dangerous and beast mode aliens can kill other people so in order to save the population they have to exterminate the beast mode aliens who have not been able to find their mate and are dangerous which is very upsetting so our heroine in here tiffany um she has been matched to an atlan warrior but he's about to be put to death because of his beast mode and so she goes to atlan to save him and to show him that she is his mate and that he doesn't have to die i really liked this one I especially loved that we got a different plot because a lot of the books in the earlier books in the series, the plot is reused a lot. And so this one was quite unique compared to all the other books. <laughs> I also loved seeing a tall and plus size heroine and a hero who's obsessed with all of her curves. Like we love to see it. Um, and I love the planet the book like takes place in, like the beast mode concept was very interesting to me. I, uh, Hope that more books in this series take place on Atlan. Um, I've read one more in that's taking place on Atlan in March. Um, I'll talk about it in a second, but I hope like even more books are set on Atlan. I have to look it up because I'm very, very intrigued by this, by this planet. Um, trigger warnings in here. There's drugging, death, and murder. Um, tropes in here. Alien romance, faded mates, um, male or bride. Um, I started a new shelf called Mine. It's... <laughs> the hero is very possessive and he says like you're mine verbatim basically in the book um because i find that very attractive sometimes <laughs> we have a plus size heroine 
a possessive hero and a tall heroine in here too. I really enjoyed this one and I gave it a four out of five stars. I'm thinking like 4.5. I'd have to reread it to see. Then I read Saving Verico by Victoria Aveline. This is the third book in the Calcanian series that I talked about earlier. So this is a romance between Lily and Verico. So Lily was in a previous book. Um, her and another um, human who escaped from that prison from book two ended up escaping and they start living in the wilderness together. And she loses her friend and she's trying to find her, but she comes across Verico instead, who is a alien and um, he is injured in the woods and so she cares for him nurses him back to health and then he uh, travels with her to help her find civilization again um Verico was in the previous book as well um so you get to meet Verico and learn more about him previously and how he got in the predicament that he was in at the beginning of this book and yeah while they travel together they're trying to like fight their attraction that they have for each other as well so this one was honestly just okay for me it's probably my least favorite in the series so far i just got bored i think again them just traveling in this jungle together for a very long time um i give this a 3.5 stars by the way um triggering in here for kidnapping tropes it's an alien romance fated mates kindle unlimited and it's a survival romance so they're both both of them are trying to survive in the wilderness together then i read the orc's wife by lila fay this is the second book in the silver fury series i talked about the first book in this series um at the beginning of 2022 it's called that one was called the orc's bride and so this is the continuation to um the hero and the heroine from book one so like it's a trilogy about the same couple and so the i'm not gonna go like too deep into it because this is the second book in this series i don't want to like spoil anything that happens you know so this is about una and ergen ergen is an orc general and uh una is a human woman who wants to unalive all orc kind because they destroyed her family but then by some means she has to agree to be ergen's um to, she has to agree to let Ergen court her um because he's very intrigued by her and he needs a wife for like a marriage of convenience and so they have to travel together to the orc capital and they end up falling in love on the way this one is essentially a continuation of book one and kind of like the ramifications that happened in book one there's like more politics and um them learning how to be a couple together this one is even more brutal and bloody than book one and Book one was very brutal and brutal, bloody so um please be aware that this book can get dark in the descriptive goriness of it sometimes i really enjoyed this one but unfortunately not as much as book one i think it's just because the characters were apart for a long time in this book and i love characters together more than they are apart you know there is a little snippet at the end of this book for book three and i'm so excited for it i can't wait to have it uh is released at the end of march and i am counting down the days um trigger warning in here or blood death murder torture mention of sexual assault poison um tropes in here you have fantasy romance there's a height difference it's on kindle unlimited it's a married couple and there's monsters and orcs um i ended up giving this book a 4.5 out of 5 stars okay i then read another interstellar brine book i read made it to the beast by grace goodwin which is another atlan book so like the beast mode aliens you know so our heroine in here sarah um accidentally gets put into the interstellar bride program when she's not meant to she's trying to get into the coalition which is like the army of all the planets and universes people make a mistake and um her file is still accidentally in the interstellar bride program and um our hero in here uh dax is an atlan warrior like the beast mode of warriors that i talked about he ends up getting matched to her and he needs to find her very fast because his beast mode is getting out of control so he goes to find her out in the coalition lines this one was okay i'm not that big of a fan of this one i gave it three stars it was okay like it's not the best one in the series it's one of my least favorite in the series probably i just like didn't really care for the couple all that much and the characters in general so this one was just meh it's okay. Then I read another Grace Goodwin. We have a surrender, surrender to the Cyborgs, um, which is um, a sub series of the Interstellar Bride program, uh, the first book in the Colony sub series, um, which means that the books in this sub series all take place on this one planet called the Colony. Essentially, they're full of aliens that have been infected by the Hive. The Hive are evil aliens. The Coalition, like a bunch of these planets, are trying to fight um, because the Hive. Are like these cybernetic creatures that try to kidnap aliens and turn them into cyborgs and to have them fight for them you know and so the people on this planet the aliens on this planet have been infected by the hive but they're not like controlled by them you know um like they have like parts of their body is cybernetic so like in one of the previous books like one of the guys has like a cybernetic eye and in this alien like 
universe if you're infected by the hive you're considered like almost dead and you're isolated to the hive the colony planet and never to be seen again and so this planet is full of men who want mates and um who aren't like damaged they just have different parts of them now um and so the, this is the first human woman that has been assigned to the colony or has been mated to an alien on the colony um her name is rachel and she gets matched to maxim who's like the general uh or the governor of the colony so like the leader of it she has like a second mate too with him so he's the main one and then she has a second one named ryston and yeah that happens a lot in grace goodwin books where there's like their one mate and then they also have a second so like if the first mate gets injured or killed the second one will take over but all three of them are together you know i gave this one a 3.75 stars i really enjoyed the science part in here rachel's actually a scientist she's been convicted because um the government tries tries to hide her scientific discoveries that could hurt them and so um she's in jail and so her two mates come and bust her out of jail which was fun to read about i have been anticipating this one just because uh, we read about the colony like this planet full of cybernetic men um in a previous book and i was very interested in this um i ended up really enjoying it i just think i like a few of the other alien books a little bit more than this one you know and the prill and prime books so like the ones where there's one main mate and then like a second one who's their second aren't my favorite i don't know why they're just not my favorite ones i think i more so enjoy the one-on-one -on -one romances except for the one book that i've read so far is like one guy no one girl and three guys that one was really fun <laughs> Um, anyway, um, the uh, side plot slash mystery in here was fun to read about as well. Um, the tropes in here, it's an alien romance, there's cyborgs, and she is a scientist. Then I ended up reading a YA book. <laughs> Surprise here. Um, so I've been trying to read books that are on my physical TBR, and one of them is The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller. I have enjoyed Trisha Levenseller's books in the past. I read her pirate king queen duology um and really enjoyed it and so this is about alessandra who has this elaborate plan okay she plans on seducing the king the the shadow king marrying him unalabbing him and then taking the throne over for herself um but then as she gets to know the shadow king she ends up falling in love with him so it's kind of like assassin turned lover romance kind of this was really fun to read i really liked the audiobook in here uh, the audiobook was i think done really well i also thought reading from alessandra's perspective was very interesting because you get to read about all the men that have wronged her in her past and what has led her to this point in her life i also just love the trope of like i plan to unalab you but i fell in love with you instead it's super fun. <laughs> I also think this is a great bridge book for those who primarily read YA and want to maybe get into adult romance. I feel like this is a great bridge book for that and dips your toe a little bit into a little bit more um, innuendos and steaminess in here. It's kind of like new adult YA mixture in here, um, but I thought this was fun. I gave it four stars. Next we have Misadventures with My Roommate by Elizabeth Haley. This is a romance between two roommates that work at a coffee shop. The hero uh, gets kicked out of his apartment. The heroine who works the coffee shop too invites him to come live with her and their roommates and they end up uh, kind of like a friends with benefit situation that turns into something more. This is a no for me. I could see the tension and the lust between the two characters, but the love was not it. Not it for me. Gave it two stars. And lastly, I want to mention this beautiful book. Um, so this is Royally Matched by Emma Chase. If you don't know, this is one of my favorite romance books of all time. And I was really struggling a couple days ago mentally. And so I was like, you know what? I need a good pick-me-up book that I just adore and will make me happy. And this book is it. I just love this book so much. You do have to read book one before this one or else you will probably be a little lost but this is about Sarah and Henry so Henry is the prince of Wesco and he's kind of like the party boy and he decides to do matched royal edition which is like the bachelor but with him as the bachelor kind of and so it's royal edition and all the contestants have to be like high uh in society ladies um because there's like certain laws about who a prince can marry and one of them is like a high society woman so all the contestants have to meet the qualifications of the law of who he can marry he's not going to actually end up marrying any of these women he's just trying to have fun with the women on this dating show and so one of the women on this show is penelope and penelope brings along her sister sarah to be her companion while they're filming all that stuff sarah is the heroine of this book and so uh henry and sarah fall in love <laughs> even though they're not supposed to because she is not on the dating show sarah in here is me as a person she is me and i love her i love her and henry's relationship and how henry becomes the man he was always meant to be um through 
getting to know and loving Sarah. And it is so beautiful. This is one of my favorite romance books of all time. It is totally worth the hype. I also forgot to mention it in like a different uh, video that Sarah does have. I don't know how to describe it. Is it a chronic illness? Is it a disability? I don't really know. Um, she has dissociative fugue state. So essentially when she hears a loud sound sometimes, her body will kind of like check out of itself. She'll just sit there in this uh, blank slate stare um, and like, be not in her head for a while she'll just sit there like this for a while until her body will wake her up and she doesn't remember anything and that's from past ptsd and abuse from her father be aware of that if you're wanting to read this book um that is an aspect in here is ptsd and abuse i just love this couple so much and the audiobooks in here are great too some of my favorite audiobook narrators of all time narrate these books and it's so good. Now I want to like reread the whole series because this series is one of my favorite series of all time. Please read it if you haven't yet. So there you have it. Those are the 11 books that I've read so far in March. Um, hopefully I will read a few more um, in the later half of the month, but we'll see because I have a teacher exam at the end of uh, March. So we'll see if I have to read a lot more. Anyway, um, please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, leave me a crown emoji because we talked about this royalty romance. Um, but anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.